It is late February and it's supermarket fruit tree season. These very cheap trees. I think uh, because this is actually someone we work for and with a staff discount, we've picked these up for, I think, £5.40 each. I think even at full price, they're like six quid each if you buy two at a pair. I'm not going to mention which supermarket. It's one of the big British supermarkets. It doesn't matter which one. They all do various fruit deals at different times of year. So do various of the cheap shops and so on. They're usually not the best. They haven't been stored brilliantly, but, you know, they are very cheap. Are these as good as... So, for example, right... All of these all in came to about 55 quid. That is eight fruit trees. And they're, you know, they're healthy, living, supposedly dormant trees. Come to that in a minute. For the same price, I could get one, maybe one and a half trees from a UK nursery. They, these aren't anything like the quality that you'd get from a nursery. Absolutely not. But if only half of them survive, we're still quids in. And we're doing everything on a budget. Now, I'm on the top swale here. This tree here was expensive. In fact, all of the first three trees here were very expensive genetics. They're really nice trees from a really good, well-known nursery. But we can't afford to fill the whole site with trees like that. So we're also planting a lot of rootstocks that we then graft to later on. And this is key. What we're actually buying here isn't just a tree. We're buying the variety. Now, a couple of these we've got duplicates and a couple of them we've got from, we've already got, you know, elsewhere. But mostly these are new varieties to us. We also have a load of grafting coming up as well. We'll do a video on that. But uh, yeah, these are new varieties to us and we only need to buy one because within a few years they'll grow out a little bit. We'll be able to take some scion wood in winter and then we can graft that onto, you know, other trees or, you know, we've got several of these that have, you know, they've died back to the graft, but they've regrown. We can just cut that again. We can regraft it with new material and we can go for apple varieties that are actually doing well here. All we're doing at the moment is seeding the site with as many varieties as we can get our hands on as a way of, you know, seeing what works, what does reliably here, so that over the next, you know, 10, 20 years and beyond, you know, even beyond my lifetime, people can start propagating, building on what actually works as the system becomes established. So, I'll do a quick walk along the swale, just to show you what we've done so far. Now, these stakes aren't actually needed by now. They've had, we've had a couple of years uh, of these in place. We could probably take them off. What I'll do, in fact, is I'll just take the strapping off. We leave these on because I want these big posts so I can put um, uh, nameplates on, so it's obvious what we've got. That one I know, I've got plans, maps of, you know, exactly which is which, but that is, um, <laughs> that is a plum. This next tree along, and this is, I've paced this out so I know roughly the same gate gap between them. So as these trees come through into full canopy, there'll still be a nice big gap between them. In between them, we've got, it's a bit dormant this time of year, of course, but we've got a significant currant bush there. We've got another currant bush there. These are all um, black currant. I think these are Ben Hope, I think, this variety. And these are doing really well. We'll you know, we've got to take cuttings from this and propagate them again this year. There's another currant bush. So the idea being that this will have an overstory of fruit trees. We'll have current bushes below. We also have another understory, which are really hard to find this time of year. We've got Cotone Aster in, which is a, a pollinator attractant. We have comfrey around all of the fruit trees and around all the currants. So we'll be building it into more of a food forest system with multiple layers, but in strips. So it's acting more like a hedgerow, but in strip form. So that fruit tree there is an apple. This next fruit tree here, and bear in mind, we're still passing loads of current bushes. This one is a pear. In fact, that's the Penryn pear. There's a couple of them I know the names of off the top of my head, but not all of them. And then this last one here is another apple. Now they're laid out the way they are, so that at no point have I got two apple trees next to each other. So if I've got a pest or I've got a disease, I don't have to worry about them um, uh, you know jumping straight from one to the other there's always something in between them so between the two um apple trees there i have a pear for example so you know i haven't got to worry about that so much so i'm going to continue that as we go up the row so i've laid out three posts in fact one of them is a bit further along than you know just on this well we'll show that when we get there so my first objective is somewhat counterintuitively is i'm going to put the posts in first because i don't want to hammer the post in with the big post doinker after i put a nice little delicate tree in so that's first things first is to put the posts in. So we'll put in, I think I've worked out three trees along here, which still gives me five trees for the next swale down. Sorry, not the next swale, the next fruit tree swale down. 
So the next one down is actually your sea buckthorn being established. And then the next one down from that is another top fruit swale, just like this one. I've got th two, actually, I've got two um, crab apples that have been planted onto that one. They're going to be grafted sometime in the next week or so with um, uh, name codes of our genetics that we've got as scion wood. We're going to be doing a lot of grafting. It's not something I've done before, which will be interesting. Um, but hopefully with what we've got there, we should pretty much fill in that swale. I'm really hoping that by the end of this year, because I did a lot of the earthworks before we could really afford to put all the trees on them. So we've got current bushes established. We've got things like comfrey established. We've got perennial grain, all sorts of things growing on them. But what we haven't had is the top fruit trees. That's what we've got here. So, yeah, that's very, very cool. So first things first, I'm going to put the posts out and then we'll note the locations of where we're going to be putting the trees in. So that's all of the posts in. So I know exactly where the trees are going to go. So now I just got to do is get them laid out so I know, you know, where things are going to go logically. I actually think I've got too many apples. I can't complete the whole double row today. Doesn't matter, we'll just get, I've actually got another tree or two coming. So we'll fill in. I'll explain as we go. So as I say, the, this one is, um, hmm, that's a plum. And I know this because that one on the end there behind the camera is either an apple or a pear. So until we actually get one, that one absolutely definitively identified, that was the safest option to put in here. So that's always my starting point is why I never forget what's up here. So that's a plum. Then we put an apple in because we could safely. So that's an apple. Then, I mean, you can see just how many current bushes there are in between. And these are done all the way along both swales. So they're good to go. We also try to put in some, one of these has taken. We put in a load of uh, black locust. And unfortunately we've had, I've had trouble with black locust. I'll do a whole separate video on it. I'm trying it again this year, but they're not easy in this environment uh, because of slugs and snails. So yeah, that was apple, which means this one is a pear which means this next one is an apple so i need this just so i know you know the spacing so i don't put two apples next to each other which is a situation i'm kind of in on the next swale so next one along because i say that one is an apple so next one will be where are we let's have a look here we go victoria plum nothing controversial you know, classic variety. So that's going in there. So that means I can go back to an apple again. So the next one will be Golden Delicious. And then theoretically, we've run out of swale, but it doesn't have to be on a swale. The whole purpose of the way we're doing things with the swale berms is to keep the fruit trees up out of the waterlogging that we get in winter so they get a good chance of not drowning. We've got other berms that are just as good. This is actually part of the berm on one of the ponds, but it's an uphill side berm. So there's absolutely no water pressure onto this. So we can put really big trees in here with no problems whatsoever. It also means that with the pond behind it, which looks really nice you know, most of the year, this here is a cherry tree, Stella. And cherry blossoms beautiful in the spring. So I figure if we're gonna have any tree over a pond it's going to be a cherry so that's where that's gone actually i'll show you this quick you can see that these supposedly dormant trees you can see just how not at all dormant they are that is not just pushing out buds that's actually putting out leaves we're not necessarily out of winter yet we might get snow if we're likely to get snow again yet those are likely to get burned off but hopefully they'll regenerate and they'll survive we've done it before we got away with it but realistically you know it is a risk um with them being from a supermarket they're not kept in optimal conditions you know the people that are looking after them you know the supermarket staff you know they're not nursery staff they haven't been trained so you know things happen so unfortunately they've been kept a bit too warm and they've actually broken dormancy no big deal uh we'll plant them in anyway and see how they do the plum and the cherry seem to be the most susceptible to it um but We'll see. Uh, they'll probably be absolutely fine. And if not, there's every chance that the rootstock will survive, put up a new shoot, and we can just regraft to it later in the sea. Yeah, well, not later in the season, a couple of years' time, uh, when it's had a chance to grow out. So that is actually the top swile completed. Now I just need to stick them in. So I'll show you what we're doing on the next swile. So I've already made a start on this swale previously. This here is a crab apple, which you can see is broken into, what, three, four different good-sized 
sticks so we can actually graft it up this year that's what we're going to do in a couple of days probably maybe next week at the latest so that i'm just leaving well alone as an apple so the next position it's all been factored in in terms of spacing but the next position i want something that's not an apple so what i've gone for and bearing in mind that between this fruiting swale and the next fruiting swale i've got a whole one that is just entirely sea buckthorn so we've got that break there so it's not a problem but i think next we'll go for i'm running out of ones that aren't apple is the problem that is a conference pear i think yep so the next one is another crab apple that we're going to graft to so again you know really strong really hardy it's actually been transplanted once it's taken it it's done it really well so we'll cut it at roughly you know that sort of height and we'll put uh, a new top on it but again that means I'm, you know a significant chunk along this swale and i've only used one tree so this one really needs to be something that isn't an apple and i think i only have one option left if i'm right there it is another victoria plum so that'll go down and that just leaves me with three apples which isn't ideal so we'll see how it works out because obviously with that one being a plum the next one can be an apple this thing has got a lot of apple trees because they're just so versatile you can do a lot with the other fruit but apples we've got you know storing variety fresh eating varieties we make a lot into apple cider vinegar and of course a really saleable product uh, so you know we are very apple heavy besides which you know the kids eat a ton of apples so i'm gonna put here a what is it there jonah gold that's an apple variety that we haven't got elsewhere on site yet so that's an original for us which gives us two apples left now the next spot of course can't be an apple because otherwise we've got that potential for disease or pests to spread so we're going to miss that out and we'll probably plant something like a pear or even something a bit more unusual there further down the line which means the next one can be an apple again and you can see the pattern so we'll go for orange pippin there cox's orange pippin and then you can see there's another two posts behind me well the first one obviously has to be something other than apple so the one on the end will be a discovery which we know does really well here because we've you know got the scion wood from it and we know other people that grow it locally so that'll do well i'm not going to bother walking all the way down there so the next step is just to dig them all in and get them all strapped in so probably won't get that finished before we lose too much of the light tonight but i'll probably come back and film a bit in the morning and just show that yeah we've other than two trees we've got a significant part of the you know the central core of the you know the, the fruit production system is now fully planted up that's a really nice feeling that's very cool right i'm gonna get these planted so i did get them all planted last night this is the next day so i've got the wall on i've got rodent guards onto them bowls are the biggest issue here uh, it's had a particularly bad bowl winter uh, but uh, yeah this will keep them off it's not a problem but uh, so yeah that is a significant chunk of all the fruit trees in so we've got the top swale completely full now including understory uh, shrubs onto well fruit bushes anyway uh, the next swale down isn't actually a full length swale that's the sea buckthorn swale which gives us a break so that is effectively completed in terms of plantings there's one or two have failed that need swapping out but you know we've got them we're all good to go you know we haven't got to make any decisions there or you know plant anything different this next swale down again uh, is another fruit swale and this one other than two trees is now completed and we're actually picking up the remaining two today they've had some more stock in so it'll be whatever you know as i said whatever they got that isn't apple is going in there one of them is very likely to be uh, another pear variety but it'll probably be something that we've already got that's you know very plentiful and cheap so we'll just be able to regraft to that because we've got some scion material coming through the uh, through the post this week of a pear variety that we actually want and uh, i think it's the Worcester pear that one so that's one that we've got i'm going to try in a few places but that gives us at least you know a graft to try this year because we might as well we leave you know a little bit of a gap of so that if the the graft does fail we're not back to the original graft you know so we've still got you know a good pear variety coming through uh so we'll see how many of them take i'm pretty optimistic um you know as i say we're not really through the worst well we're through the worst of the winter we're not through the last of the winter yet so we could easily get some very very cold nights we could still get some snow we could get a few storms still but we'll see um if a couple of them fail 
were still quids in in terms of cost because you know they're well as I say five pound fifty each compared to you know thirty forty fifty pounds sometimes. Um, as I say they're not the best quality, but they are the right price. So. We'll see how we get on with them. Um, the ones we put in previous, they've been pretty happy with them. You know, they're all perfectly healthy. They're all doing well. So all that's going to happen now for these two swales this year is all of the new trees need comfrey cuttings putting around them. So that will then act as a rhizome barrier. It'll push the grass back, shade the grass out so we can just come through, scythe the cuttings a couple of times a year. Well, so it's the full-sized comfrey plants by then. Uh, scythe them a couple of times a year feed the actual fruit tree that's you know over as the overstory um and it then again really has a good suppressing effect on the grass so we've done it around most of the older stuff and they're really coming into the point this year that you know there's going to be no grass left around them it's really nice to see so instead of having to throw mulch down all the time you know adding wood chip and all the rest of it it has a cost it has an input i'd rather use it elsewhere so we're going for a living mulch uh, so they all need those adding and probably this year we'll come through with some more understory stuff. Previously, we've also, can't see them this time of year because obviously everything's down because it's the middle of winter. But we also have a lot of perennial blue lupin running through both of these swales. So again, that's got good nitrogen fixation. Um, rather than go, a lot of people would go for nitrogen fixing trees every second or third tree. I'm going for a different variety, you know, a different way myself. Uh, we go for a, a reasonable amount of variation of nitrogen sources but the most direct being the um the nitrogen fixing herbaceous layer like the perennial blue lupin really nice plants as well and it also means because this is a site that we do still have customers on site for the customers from the top of the site looking down it means that the swales the tree rows that tend to disappear in summer because once the grass comes up it's up to this height that will change of course as we're able to start grazing more with the geese but at least at this point you know we still get a lot of grass grass growth so it means that it's very difficult to spot the earthworks in the landscape and then it doesn't look like a perm because permaculture site as much. Whereas once the lupin are in and they flower for most of the year, you better see them and then they'll, you know, from that you better see the posts and you better see the tree yards and then later on you better see the trees as well starting to come up and then it starts to really define the landscape as this isn't just a generic field, you know, there's something more interesting going on here. So yeah, it's really good to get it done. That's a massive it's been driving me nuts for about three years as we put these in so that's very very cool i'll not film when we put the other two trees in but they're going in that's all good we've got a few other uh projects going on in the food forest in the next couple of days i'll probably film them as well but uh yeah that feels pretty good can't have too many fruit trees <laughs>